Hello, it's me, uh, your friendly neighborhood revolver content guy, with a video here about cylinder letting and cylinder reaming. Uh, so if you've been watching my recent videos, my recent match videos, you'll recall that I've been having some serious issues with lead buildup on the cylinder, which manifests itself as a trigger that sticks that I can't pull in double action, sometimes not even in single action. So that's obviously not great, and doing some reading, I discovered that uh, Ruger revolver cylinders tend to be sized for, uh, well, for jacketed bullets, and for those you want a pretty tight fit, like just about the same as the uh, bore diameter. If you're shooting lead, though, you want a slightly looser chamber, uh, which will let the bullet uh, kind of slide through and then make it to the forcing cone without shaving on the way. The shaving in the cylinder is what spits uh, lead onto the frame and onto the face of the cylinder, and that's what causes my problems. So I went to uh, 4drentals.com, 4D Reamers? 4D Reamer Rentals, uh, they've got a website somewhere, and uh, ordered this uh, rental cylinder chamber throater. So we're gonna dig in and uh, see how it goes. So please pardon the state of my workbench here. I've got a lot of other projects going on and it is as they, well, I don't think anybody else is it, but it is a working workbench. So yeah, it's a bit of a mess uh, outside of frame in each direction here. Also, I'm not used to having the camera right here. So if I show something to the computer screen, that's, that's why. Anyway, so the tools that I needed for this uh, prior to renting the re uh, reamer. So I took the cylinder out and I got these pin gauges off of Amazon. They were about four bucks a piece, and since I only needed three, five, four through about three, five, eight, it was a lot cheaper to buy just five of them separate than to buy, you know, an entire box set from a quarter of an inch to half an inch in thousandth intervals. Yeah, so uh, this these are Vermont gauge. Uh, black oxide brand ones. So I started off by taking my 357, since I've read online that your Ruger cylinders tend to be about 357 to 3575, and uh, tried it in each of, the, uh, each of the cylinders. And it passed a 357 gauge and did not pass a 358 gauge uh, uniformly all around, which suggests that I do need to go a little bit bigger. I believe the, uh, the reamer is in kind of the standard 358 chamber diameter. Um, yeah, so uh, the way this works is you've got a selection of these uh, little pilots here. Uh, this one is a 357, and it comes with a 354 uh, through 357 in five ten thousandth intervals. So you uh, test the pilots on the front of the cylinder until you find the one that works for each one. You write that down. For me, it's nice and easy because, uh, as I have got on my sheet here, 357 fits all and uh, then you kind of go to town. So let me uh, rejigger my camera a bit so you can see the vise, and we'll get going. All right, so you start the process by uh, oiling the cutting edges of the reamer, especially for a rental, that's very important because they will charge you out the nose if you return a damage tool. They've got a list of cutting oils that are acceptable, and Tap Magic, uh, which I just happened to have on hand from a previous project, works just fine for this, although some of their other tools recommend a uh, slightly more serious product. So I've got chamber number three here, since I've already done one and two. Just kind of set it in, let the pilot center the reamer, and then turn clockwise until uh, it pops out the bottom. takes almost no pressure at all. The tool does most of the work, and I'm only removing a thousandth of an inch of steel here, so it's not like a super intense process. This is a uh, 1 16th to, I think, 1 half tap wrench, and it works just fine. Um, might get a little bit more leverage out of a bigger one, but you don't really need it. Again, I'm just barely even, you know, light finger pressure to turn the, turn the tool here. Right, and I can see the front of the reamer starting to poke out of the bottom of the uh, out of the bottom of the cylinder. Almost there. Now it's starting to turn freely, and there it goes. Uh, they say to give it a little wipe before you 
uh, pull it back through the uh, back through the chamber to take out any uh, take off any uh, serious what's it called what's the word any any chips on the surface of the tool and I have been finding that giving it a little turn uh, in the cutting direction as I pull it out oops, makes it a little easier to get it through uh, a tight chamber so it comes back out give it a little clean again and uh, now to the remaining five cylinders so to number my cylinders I've got them uh, written here on a little piece of masking tape that I stuck to the uh, well just to the surface of the cylinder so it comes off nice and clean and gives me a surface that I can write on that is not uh, the cylinder itself so time for number four and we'll uh, hit the uh, sped up footage button from here on out And that's that. So uh, I've gone through all eight cylinders. You actually, there's a uh, some tool uh, some tool marks now in the uh, in the chamber throats, which I guess makes sense given that I just ran a tool through them by hand. But anyway, so I've got my uh, three five eight gauge here, which did not pass before, and now it is just a perfect fit in each of these. Now, if you, I guess, drop straight through. Um, yeah, so it's no side-to-side -side play, really, which is what you want to see. So the, uh, the real test, they say that to put lead bullets through a revolver, a revolver successfully, what you want to be able to do is push them through the cylinder with uh, basically finger pressure. And I could not do that before. I had to use a brass rod and uh, drive them through. So I've got one of my uh, standard 160 grain bullets here, so I'll drop it in. Uh, it stays. I'll take, uh, I guess, the back of this pen, give it a push, and out comes the bullet. Perfect. So I guess the last thing to do is take it to the range and uh, see how it goes. So I will see you there. Well, that didn't go quite to plan, and I will level with you. I thought it was going to, so I was planning on ending the video here, but unfortunately the quest for a lead-free gun continues, and the, uh, the chamber reaming, despite the uh, high hopes I had for it, did not do a great deal to stop the, uh, the leading issues I was seeing. So on to the next step, uh, ammunition changes. So my previous bullets, uh, these guys, are pretty heavily crimped. That makes them pretty slick-sided. Uh, not a lot of uh, lip there at the case mouth, which means they drop into the cylinder uh, more easily, which is good in this division because, uh, as a recent Jerry Mitchell -like video says, they're always empty and there's a lot of reloading. Uh, so the potential solution here is a slightly lighter crimp, um, and I've got some example bullets that I pulled from uh, a real round and a new test round uh, that I hope will so what I mean, so I've got the uh, the one from a real uh, previously loaded bullet here, and I don't know if you can see, there's just above my fingertip there is a line. That is where the crimp uh, bit into the coating. And it's not all the way through, I can't see lead through it, but it does uh, caliper at about 351 uh, on the 
like under where the crimp was. And there's not a whole lot of space between the end of the crimp and uh, where the taper of the bullet starts. So it's possible that I was getting some blow-by, and that is what is uh, causing my letting problems. It seems plausible, at least, because it seems, uh, looking into the chambers in the forcing cone on the workbench down here, um, the letting is localized to the kind of the ends of the chamber throats and the forcing cone and just a little tiny bit into the barrel. And if I was um, like burning through the bottom of the bullet or something, I'd expect it to go further down, I guess. Anyway, uh, here is one of my uh, loaded test rounds. That is crimped basically just to take the flare off like everyone says you're supposed to. And uh, it measures about 3.56 under the crimp against a, like a 3.57 and a half bullet. They're 3.58 nominal size, but they're a little bit uh, under. Anyway, so I'm hoping that does the trick. And since I don't have the time to get to the range uh, prior to the end of this week, probably, I'm not going to be shooting a match this weekend. And I am going to instead, uh, next time I'm out, shoot the Tiger Beretta, the very first uh, gun I shot a USPSA match with, with some updated grips and uh, extended magazine release. So hopefully I can uh, come back to this video at the end of this week, uh, which is going to be slightly before I post it probably either way, and tell you that it worked, and uh, if so, then I'll be back shooting the revolver toward the end of this month. me, Jay, your revolver content guy, and it has been 41 days since I've had a reliable gun. Hopefully today's the day. So what I have for you today, uh, 24 rounds of varying but very light crimp, and hopefully one of these proves to be the magic recipe. Also some 38 special, uh, because somebody suggested maybe that's the difference. And if it is, I don't quite know what I'm going to do. I don't know, I'm not sure that's what I wanted to see. So one good thing. Apparently I don't need any crimp whatsoever uh, beyond just seating the bullet to uh, hold it in the, in the case. These are actually, they're flared wider at the case mouth than they are uh, right around the bullet, and it's still held just fine, so. That's one thing. Let's uh, put another moon or two through here and see what, well, another load or two through and see what happens. I do see a good deal less buildup between the muzzle and the between the forcing cone and the cylinder. So I'm gonna put this next batch in. These are crimped to uh, basically a perfectly straight wall, uh, three seven seven from a uh, three seven seven around the bullet, three seven seven at the mouth. just possible this might have done it. Um, I'm still getting... Oh, here, let's come over to the camera and show you before the uh, rain comes in. So I, I'm still getting, if you can see this, you may not be able to, and if not, I'll take some pictures later. Uh, I'm still getting a pattern around the forcing cone, but it looks like it might just be soot as opposed to lead. Uh, looking into the, the chamber throats as well, I see like some dirt, but none of the, uh, well, I guess the lead I'm used to. So the real test of this is going to be taking it home, uh, doing some light cleaning, like nothing with abrasives and uh, running my pin gauges through. So that was my day at the range. It's not quite as bad as I made it out to be, 
I got through 40 rounds without very much trouble at all in the way of uh, cylinder binding or trigger freeze, as I've been calling it. At any rate, I'm kind of it's up in the air whether I'm going to shoot the next match with this or with the uh, production belt I now have. It kind of comes down to what I can get done uh, on this bad boy. So I've got my old ammunition here and my new ammunition right here. And it's pretty hard to tell the difference, but if I put them side by side, you can see that the... Well, actually, you really can't in the video. The old one is just very slightly shorter. The new one is loaded to a slightly longer overall length. And what I think that's going to do for me is uh, give me more uh, bearing surface that's not under the crimp at the full diameter of the bullet, which will hopefully help prevent blow-by. Uh, it's also a little bit... Uh, well, it's you know, more case volume because the bullet's loaded further out. So I'll get a little bit, uh, hopefully a little bit lower pressure. Maybe, you know, burn less of the coating off the bottom of the bullet as it's coming out of the chamber. And both of those will help. You know, since I got through 40 rounds, I can at least get through a stage at a time with detours to the safe table. If I can load enough, I might try and take some up to the range sometime this coming week prior to the match and see how... Uh, like a couple of moon clips behave. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, get to the point where I can just load up my box of moon clips and go to a match, but I don't think I'm quite there yet, maybe? Anyway, this has already gotten, like, twice as long as I wanted it to, because I went into it thinking, oh, I'll just ream the cylinders, or ream, ream the chambers, and that'll, uh, that'll solve everything. And it did not. Uh, it's a complicated piece of machinery, your revolver, and I am clearly still learning. So, uh, until next time, that's all I got.